What's going on? Can somebody tell me what's going on? Seriously? Anybody? Bueller? Bueller? Okay, so Notion and Google Tables. What what are we talking about here? These are two apps that, well, one of them you probably knew existed. Other one you, you did know existed. So Google Tables is, is a business workflow management automation tool, as Google puts it. And it's in beta. However, you know, I mean, we're talking about beta, so like pricing. But it, it's one of those situations where like you can upgrade for more tables. This is the pricing situation. The current plan is free. So I get 100 tables, 1,000 rows of data, 1 gigabyte of attachment shorts, and then paid. You can get this number of things. And if I go to upgrade now, pretty share the reason that this is marked off is because I have Google business. But this is something that's created by Area 120 at Google. And what's absolutely amazing about tables versus, you know, Notion, which is $4 a month for what you really need, team spaces is $8 a month per person, is that it pretty much does all of the table functionality and whatnot in Notion, but uh, better? Wh who was that? Was that me? Did I say that? Yeah, so it works very similarly to what you'd find in Notion, right? You know, you have a bunch of different columns, whereas you'll see there's a myriad of different options. There's even a linked table, which you'll see at the top, which gives you a summary or a lookup. So so, you know, we know what lookups are just like a notion with rollups and uh, summaries or creates a column to summarize data from related rows. And we'll look through these and we'll notice really quickly that a lot of these are the exact same except drive attachments and location. Are, are we talking about things that have direct Google integrations into a, a table based system? Yeah, it's almost like this is a Google product. And then the metadata columns are also things like, you know, creator, update or update create time, comment time, row ID. These kind of things are, are nice for tracking different parts of the metadata, but the columns are very similar. You'll see here that if I go to this column section, I can delete columns. I can insert new columns above or duplicate. This is very similar to the functionality that's within Notion. You could easily go right here and edit them, lock them, freeze them, which is very similar to what we do in something like Excel. So if I scroll this way, you'll see the phase isn't moving, right? So that's something that's actually pretty important and usable as well. If I right click, there's right click functionality in the product, which is obviously nice. You can go and sort by different things here as well. And what you'll notice on the left here is that it's actually grouping. It has the option between grid, calendar, queue, map, and Kanban, but it can also group. So it's grouped based on phase, this section here. So if I cancel the grouping, it just turns into a table. Now you might be asking yourself, Dimitri, what really matters about this? You know, why, why does this, any of this matter? What, what what functionality does this have that Notion doesn't have? And that really comes in the form of automation. So when we go within this, we'll see that there's this bot created. So there's this subtask column right here. So we can rename really quick and you'll see that. So what happens interestingly enough here is you'll see that it, this status, if I mark this as not complete, and then I make these two complete without needing a formula like you'd need to have in Notion, just like with in Notion, I have a task and subtask template where essentially if I have all the subtasks marked off, then this progress bar would go to zero, 100. And then in here, we have actual automation where these things happen and then it changed the, the status where I can actually change it. And the other situation is a formula that changes the name based off of the different subtask property. But in here, this literally just went, okay, when changes in any subtask and subtask is now complete, update bro of status to complete. And it can do a bunch of different ones to all the different ones. You could also then change the owner. So it's like once it's complete, change, give it to the project manager. You could also do a myriad of things in here with bots that are not just that. You could do time-based, which what does that tell you? Makes it recurring tasks. You can add a row, select row, so add it to project planner, and you can mark all all of these different things. So ETA set column value, and you could set it there. You could set the status, the steps, the subtasks. And this actually allows you to do a templated value as well, which has like a little formula and variable functionality in it too. And in Notion, what you have is the ability to set recurring tasks now, but not in the same way. You can do repeat on every single day, week, month, year. However, it doesn't really associate the date property with it. So a lot of people are, you know, a little iffy on it right now, but in this situation, you can even just mark off specific things. So you can update specific rows. You can 
send emails, you can send email summaries, you can send to a webhook, you can execute an app script. There are so many things that you can do here and it all is within the Google ecosystem, which is very nice. And this also has the option to, whenever a row is added, you can change things. Whenever a row is removed, you can change things or when comments are added or when the co column value changes. It's very unique and has a lot of customization to it. And then something just to point out, last time I checked, Notion doesn't have this. It does not have the ability to, as you can see, this is a Google Drive property, get the entirety of your share drives, my drives, and the connectivity within here is amazing. Say for some reason I needed to connect the uh, behind the scenes Panic at the Disco audio file of California from Viva Lost Vengeance, I'd be able to connect it right here. Or if I just wanted to connect a Google Doc right here, you'll see that it did. And this entire ecosystem is very interconnected and there is a myriad of different use cases for this, whether it be docs, whether it be videos, whether it be different project assets that you want to connect to your project management in Google. I use Google Drive. I think it's way better than OneDrive for creatives and using it between pl cross platform between Google and Mac users. So that's why it's my app of choice. And Notion integrations still suck. Yeah, I said it. They suck. They're not good. They haven't been good for a while. And maybe they'll get good one day. There's a couple of them that are coming through the, you know, like with grid sort of, and, but it's a lot of it just embeds, right? It's like, I don't really, I, I just, I, I'm getting to the point where it's like, I don't really care about embeds. Once you give me the sync database with Google Calendar, I'll stop crying. But integrations outside of API connections with third-party apps just are not good notion. But this is all native. This is all native. And if you're looking for a solution that has native Google Calendar integrations, bada bing, bada boom, you got it right here. And you can even add forms within these. This is the kind of stuff that you're getting in this. You're, you're getting just, you're getting so much more in regards to functionality. What you're not getting though is the cool aesthetic of Notion and being able to like navigate through a million different page layouts. And that is the thing. You know, it's like Notion's really cool and uh, that's what it's got on it. Honestly, the, the, the beta here and whether we know whether this is going to be a thing moving forward is kind of what's holding me back from using it at all. And also the aesthetic of it is just not nearly as good. I mean, it's like, look, look, look at this. I, I don't want to work within this. And it's very important that you care about, you know, if you work within something and you like it, you're going to keep doing it. If you don't work in something you like, you're going to not be as productive in it. And that's something important to point out there. Are you going to be productive doing this? You know, like checking out this video? Because I think you might be. Actually, you definitely will be more productive if you check out this video.